Hey, what's going on, guys? It is Dobbs, Mr. Crockpot on Twitter. Julian Champagny is the newest member of the Philadelphia 76ers. We're going to deep dive into what he brings to the roster, his pros, his cons, and the fit with the Sixers. Guys, if you are new to the channel, smash that subscribe button. Let's go. All right, let's take a look at Julian Champagne. An unexpected drop-off in three-point accuracy prevented this guy from generating buzz during the draft process. But this is a dangerous, versatile shot maker for a wing slash forward who can either play the three or the four. His offensive game has evolved following a breakout sophomore season. This is a guy who can score in a variety of ways, who has the length and the quickness to guard multiple positions on the defensive end. This was a highly productive college player who won't turn 21 years old until next month and ranked in the top 10 of the Big East for both win shares at 3.5 and per of 22.2. Julian Champagny returned to St. John's for his junior season after testing the NBA draft waters in 2021, pulling out due to a wrist injury that affected his shot. This college basketball season, he led the Big East in points per game for the second consecutive season. The Brooklyn native ranked second in the Big East with 2.0 steals per game and 10th with 1.1 blocks per game. He finished 20th on the career scoring list at St. John's with 1,408 points in three seasons. He reached double figures in 40 consecutive games and he also averaged 6.8 rebounds, made 149 three-pointers and shot 81.5% from the free throw line. Let's talk about the pros that Julian Champagny brings to the Sixers. First up, this is a very good shooter. Champagny's number one skill is his shooting. This is a high volume three point shooter who attempts 6.2 attempts per game. The majority come from catch and shoot situations as a floor spacer on the court. He's got a lightning quick release with deep range. His half-court three-point shooting average is 1.089 points per possession, good for 69th percentile. He averaged 0.9 points per possession, good for 68th percentile overall as a spot-up shooter. He also shot 88% from the foul line on 4.6 attempts as a sophomore. I think Julian Champagne will thrive much more with the spacing provided at the NBA level. For example, 73% of his catch and shoot opportunities were guarded last year. That means he only hit on 32% of those scenarios. The next strength of Julian Champagne is he projects best playing off ball with the potential to play both forward spots. This is a good cutter and off the ball score. He averaged 1.267 points per possession as an off ball cutter last year, good for 66th percentile. He shows the most flashes as a tall perimeter forward who could be potentially a stretch for at the next level. I think projecting Julian Champagne to the NBA either means that he has to be able to embrace a smaller spot up role or be really good at getting to his spots as a jump shooter. Based on film, he's clearly got some issues creating separation, so molding this guy into a switchable forward is most likely his best bet for his NBA career. I think this guy's future will revolve around abusing mismatches that can be created from off-ball screening actions, which will help him effectively at attacking the rim. It's easy to see this guy being a very good fit alongside James Harden. Let's take a closer look at Julian Champagne as an off-ball weapon. Side. These guys helped it. Yeah, nice little screen. Look at the lock. They do it so well. And a foul. He's driving it up. Blocked inside by Stanley. Good recovery defensively. Long pass to the other end. And start high school in the Ad High School ranks. With 25 points a game. You know, that's a big deal, though. He had been 0 for his last 8 from 3. So that cut down. And they come off an unbelievable win. And then we get to areas to improve with Julian Champagne. He's not vertically explosive. Champagne is a below average athlete by NBA standards. Let's be real, his speed and explosiveness are not his strengths. He doesn't play with a lot of physicality. His post-ups only accounted for 6.4% of his offense in the half court, and he was borderline ineffective there, averaging 0.742 points per possession, good for 33rd percentile. He's quite simply a below-the-rim finisher, which could have a profound impact on his development moving forward. 
The second major area to improve upon for Julian Champagne is that he's not a great shot creator and he has an inconsistent jumper off the dribble. This is a guy who primarily scores from the perimeter with most of his scores in the paint coming via cuts and putbacks. He needs to improve as a ball handler. He has a tendency to hold the ball and pick up his dribble instead of making a play happen. He's more of a play finisher than a facilitator and his ball handling is average at best and this is a guy who clearly won't be used to penetrate defenses at the NBA level. The pick and roll accounted for just 3.2% of his offense last year. As a driver in the half court, he made 19 of 59 shots, including four of 19 within seven feet. Developing this guy's shot and turning him into a reliable floor spacer is everything for Julian Champagne. Do you guys like the pickup? Do you dislike it? Please be sure to let me know down in that comment section below. And Give this video a like if you love the Sixers and Julian Champagne. Thank you everyone for watching. Follow me on Twitter at Mr. Crockpot. Stay awesome, everyone.